And I am your host, as always, Chad Bordo, and joining me is the glorious one. Well, nope, actually, sorry, you're not the glorious one. You're the rudimentary one. Zachary Tyler, whatchamacallit, pew pew, Ali Ali Oxen for Yunkin. How how dare you insult Marcus like that? I know. I feel bad. <laughs> uh, by the by, uh, I've been I I, I I need to get back on a regular ish sleeping schedule because the whole getting up at two in the morning or two at, in the afternoon, going to bed at six in the morning, it's really making my work day compressed. I'm not saying that I mind mm-hmm. it. I, I I I those are my preferred hours of sleeping. <laughs> But, um, uh, yeah, I just got last night's show uploaded on YouTube, so you can go check that out. Um, it, it's, it's, it's there, so, so, you know, enjoy. Um, Thackeray, um, are you, uh, watching the, uh, watching the, uh, the stream? Uh, I'm not, but I can be if you need me to. Just just kind of peek in on it, make sure everything's hunkadory. I I can does that. Use Wills. does that I shall. Use Wills do's the things that the guy's gonna gonna be the thing. When I wake up, you know I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you. When I come home. Please don't. What you don't like, I will walk 5,000 miles and I will walk 500 more. It's a good song. Uh, yeah, that's a great song. It's a good song. I didn't say great. It is mildly acceptable for the right time of night. <laughs> <laughs> is the stream broadcasting Are We Live? The, the 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 stream be live and we are sounding like we are sounding. Oh no, that's awful. Because <laughs> that means we sound like ourselves. Oh god. <laughs> so let's talk some impact wrestling. We have no certain to talk about than we have last night's impact. I'm gonna try to keep this to 40-ish minutes so Zach doesn't have to, you know, stay up past his beddy time. Plus, I still have Four articles to write from for, for, for red shirts always die. And then I still have to work do the working out. So you know stuff. <laughs> All mm. right. Um we don't have an image for the first match or, or for the pay per view introduction. So we'll just we'll just talk about the first match and then we'll jump to the to the second match and then we'll have an image which you're already seeing. So like you know, you're you're technically ahead of the curve. Congratulations, fuck off. Uh, Decay, which is now Black Tarus, grazy, 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 crazy, grazing Black Tarus, crazy Steve <laughs> Rosemary defeated the team of Triple Hex Hell, which is AC Romero and Lardy, and Daniel Dashwood with Caleb with the mm-hmm. K in the corner. So, thoughts, ideas, percolatory statuses, if that's a thing. I feel like Jack Carter and Eureka. I'm just making words up now to sound smart. <laughs> I mean, whatever, whatever works for you, man. By, um, by the by, go get Peacock because you can watch Eureka now, and it's awesome. It's on Peacock. Yes, I guess. Does does NBC technically own Sci-Fi? Is that how that works? Yes, that's exactly how it works. Yeah, Aha. they have new episode or the, the premiere episode of Young Rock up on Peacock already. But yet, if you want to watch the new sci-fi series Resident Alien, you're SOL. That's good. I got to cover that tonight. Which is another have Have you seen uh, Have you seen Young Rock? <laughs> I have not. I saw it, uh, I Rocky not. Johnson getting chanted "Die Rocky Die." Does that count for anything? <laughs> Just, just point that one out. So we Rocky do have John, uh, Rocky Maivia. Yeah, it was Rocky Maivia. Whatever. Rocky there Johnson was his father. That's right. All right. People uh, liked him, from what I understand. Well, you know, when they weren't in the South. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was no. He was. He was, he was. He was Soul Man Rocky Johnson, after all. That's true. But the, at least the South was uh, 
NWA territory. So sure. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Th- those are the three <laughs> letters that we most reference to the South when it re- responds with the, the, the black soul man, Rocky Johnson. Yes. It's the NWA. Yes. Those three letters. <laughs> Uh, Black Taru right. is a beast. He threw Larry D around like a bitch. I love it. He did. He did. <laughs> it's so good. Um, I got nothing really to say about this other than it was a showcase match for Black Tarus, and he was fantastic in it. He was. Made, made Larry D not look not triple XL. <laughs> Just double XL. Which, I mean, yeah, to be fair, Larry, I mean, he obviously AC would be the triple XL on the team. Larry's not that much, not I mean he's he's a large man but he's not like enormous. He he I think he qualifies for double XL but he's like on the cusp. Mhm. I think he could be a single XL. Yeah. Uh any thoughts on that one? Uh decent match as you said mostly showcasing a black Taurus. Um Yeah, it was it was it was a, it was a, a, sol- a solid opener. Uh, well, we can skip any commentary on this one because it wasn't, I don't know, black, uh, not black to roost. Brian Myers and Hernandez <laughs> defeated Eddie Edwards and Cardona when Myers pinned Edwards, I think. I don't remember. I don't care. Yeah, don't give a shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it was what it was. Uh, it Jake's, was. Jake something defeated Cody Diener and he looked pretty damn good doing it. I like his very minimalistic mm. uh, style. And that single mm-hmm. elbow pad is pretty slick, so so you know, thumbs up to that. Uh, I think Jake something could be a, a real star in this company, and I hope they're going to give him a legitimate push. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like, I kind of like the direction they're going with. Um, I, I still feel like Jake something is not great. <laughs> I feel like. If you would, if they'd put some more brain power behind it, they could have come up with something that has that says the same thing, but is a little more clever, has a little more impact to it. Well, to be fair, sometimes it's the most minimalistic ideas that have the biggest results. I mean, after all, the Undertaker's first name was Kane. Kane, the Undertaker. Yes. That's true. And then they're like, "No, we're you just are call him the Undertaker." Mm-hmm. So so, who mm-hmm. knows? Maybe one day we'll be calling Jake something Tsum Tsum. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe Ting without an H. Or maybe Ing. I don't know. Maybe Um or Ja or K. Ja So. Ja So. There you go. I- <laughs> Next up, we have the uh, very fun... Triple Threat Revolver match, which featured Josh Alexander, Ace Austin, Blake Christian, Chris Bay, Davari, Suicide, Trey Miguel, and Willie, 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 Willie Mac. Um, so everyone's raving about Blake Christian. He was great in this, wasn't mm-hmm. he? He was. Absolutely. Do, do you agree with me that Impact should sign him long term? Yes, I, I definitely agree. He... Is one of the more one of the most unique high flyers in a professional wrestling landscape. That everyone's a high flyer and everyone does the same shit. I'm so everything glad. he. Go on, finish, finish your thought. Every everything he does is unique and innovative and is pulled is just pulled off spectacularly. Announced this morning he has signed a long-term deal. Hmm. With Fantastic. The, with the WWE. Ah, of course. <laughs> she didn't know not building up to something. <laughs> I, was say, I feel like that was... <laughs> <laughs> so, apparently, um, a bunch of indie guys, um, some of who I know, some of who I don't, um, Har- Harlem Bravado signed, um, Blake Christian, Bronson or Steiner, Rick's son, Rick Steiner's son, the nephew of Scott Steiner, uh, famous mm-hmm. for beating up a, a plastic duck and doing math live on pay-per-view. He signed as well as this new dude from UCF football who everyone's comparing to uh, Brock Lesnar. He signed. So new crop of NXT performance guys who will probably never reach their full potential in the comedy because they don't know how to book talent anymore. I'm just saying. 
Oh, by the by, Josh Alexander won, and the victory ended up amounting to nothing. But you know, whatever. Yeah, great, great job, guys. Great job. Uh, wasn't too th- thrilled with the no DQ fire and flavor victory over Havoc and Avia. I already feel like the yeah. knockouts tag team division is is lacking talent. <laughs> So that's a thing. It's amazing how quickly that turned. <laughs> right. To be fair, Rosemary and Tennille are in a intergender feud. Six women are in a singular feud with one another. It's just, yeah. it's just like, what are y'all doing? And I don't even know who you and, can like move over to that, you know, feud now. Like Alicia, maybe? But who's her partner? I don't know. Yeah. And like the, the, a part of the beginning, uh, the the resurgence of the knockout tag team division was happened to be, you know, Taya teaming with Rosemary and oh. Taya gone. So, okay, There's, there there was a there was a solid, you know, next championship, next champion team gone. So, Ali was Rosemary's friend because Ali was friends with everyone, and Rosemary found her endearing. Mm-hmm. Taya was trying to use Rosemary, but they ended up both being pretty vindictive bitches, so they had a lot in common. Mm-hmm. What if Alicia starts to try to be friends with Rosemary simply because she has nothing else to do and she's just sucking up to her on a constant weekly basis, dressing up like her, you know, like basically hamming it up and and either pissing off rosemary or 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 really pissing off rosemary to the point where they end up becoming a tag team because that's how wrestling works. <laughs> but like <laughs> that, she that is- she be like Ally Mary or like Rosalie or something like that and just trying to be like dumb and stupid and she she be you know like rosemary would be like you know hissing and ah, and then Ally would just be like roar. <laughs> <laughs> like that and rosemary would just be like god damn it no kill me kill me now. <laughs> That's what I, I that, want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's I'm not, I'm not, that is kind of how the how the Taya thing happened. I mean, Taya obviously was just acted like Rosemary was her BFF because Ro, because Taya was the the uh, the California blonde <laughs> and just thought everyone loved her. But I mean, I I could definitely see them doing something like that, or at least I could if. I don't know if that would still work as well with like DK being reformed, but you, you are correct. That is exactly how wrestling works. They would, uh, Rosemary would just despise her so much and then they'd go win the tag team championship. Yep. Well, it, now it, it would work it, it, it really well with DK because crazy. C would be like Rosemary. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like even Steve knows something's wrong with, with Alicia. Um, <laughs> If you I, want, I, yes. Uh, concerning concerning Crazy Steve, I miss the monkey. Bring the monkey back. Make the monkey demonic and bring him back. Then again, we still haven't found our monkey. He's been gone for a few years. Invisible. I mean, he may not be gone at all. We just don't know. Well, I haven't smelled anything rotting, so. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the other idea would be uh, having. <clears throat> Rosemary recorrupt Susan mm-hmm. and kind of having DK as a four person, two tandem stable where Steve mm-hmm. and Toru mm-hmm. is one tag team and Rosemary and Sue Young is another. But the one thing that I would want to do with, with Sue Young is kind of get like update her look, like go away from the bloody kind of sundress look that she was going for or night leger, whatever that was. And kind of, you know, incorporate more of a ghastly, demonic look, not just kind of spooky South Korean look. I think she's Korean. Mm -hmm. I'm going to double check because I don't want to be that guy. (laughs) I just love how if you look at, like, the Wikipedia, you have Joe Doring, Havoc, Rohit, ODB, Susan. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Ah, <laughs> so dumb. Uh, I don't know. It, it doesn't list her ethnicity. Yeah, it does I, not say. I think I think she's Korean. I could be wrong. 
Because I think Young is Korean, but I, I don't know. Her name is Vanara. Vanara? 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 Young? Vanara? Vanara, Vanara Riggs? Yeah. That's, Ooh, that's, I, that's, a, that's a name. No idea. That's a name. <laughs> she's, the, her face paint's kabuki style, so maybe she's Japanese. Mm hmm. Though, so, I mean, Korea may have something similar. That's true. I mean, if you think about the. Uh, the the stone soldiers in China, their their masks could be kind of, you know, samurai ish, but they're not. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, two different cultures. I'm just saying, you know, there are, there are some similarities. Like if you look yeah. at their languages, they're designed very stylistically similar to one another. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're not, but they have to have a root language. You gotta think, right? You you would think, yeah. I mean, you would think that. Like Japan, Korea, China, Vietnam, those play like those countries all have some common ancestry to them, right? Like because you look at you look at the the, the Latin, the Spanish, the mm-hmm. German, the French. It, it's 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 maybe not so much the German because it's a lot of hard rush. Yes, it's just I mean it, 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 German. I feel like German is a lot further removed, but it still it still takes some from it. Yep. Although then you get like the Swedish or, or the Norwegian languages. The, the what is that region called? Not not Sweden, Norway. Uh, Scandinavian. Scandinavians. They're all just like <laughs> just a lot of T's. Just <laughs> a lot of T's and everything. <laughs> I was listening to that fucking. Uh, but remember back, we were so off the goddamn fucking topic. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember when we were both heavily into uh, Team Four Star, and they released that Vegeta promo because they're going to Europe for for a convention, and it was just that that random ass Finnish or Swedish um, song where he's just like spinning yeah, the fucking. Uh- yeah, like yeah, it was like ten minutes of like of the song and yes. Goku like spitting his like is yeah, like powerful it was Goku. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was Goku. Well, I, I I know where that song is. I found that song and I've listened to like thirty different versions of that song and literally every l- l- lyric is just look that look 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 and I'm like, all right, sweet. This is a song with a lot of T's. <laughs> that's all this language <laughs> is. Just T's everywhere. Anyway, we have a half an hour to finish two shows. So we should probably uh, mosey on down. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, uh, knockout tag team title match wasn't great. Uh, Rohit no. lost to TJP, which broke my heart because fuck TJP. Um, and Shira did absolutely, had, well, had really no reason to be there whatsoever. Nope. But at least he's getting used again. Um, the six women's uh, knockout match was fine. Yeah. Uh, Susan's not a great worker. Jazz and ODB are being slowed by age, and Jordan Grace and Deanna are the only two that really have any um, skills that I would say are living up to their name value. Mm-hmm. I want to see more from Kimberly. She was really good in Shikara. I don't know what the hell's happening to her. Um, we got the private party Motor City beer guns or beer city motor guns or beer something, 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 motor something. And then we have the good brothers who we could both do without the good brothers were chained because of course they did because we don't have the right to have anything good on impact anymore because fuck the good brothers. Did I miss anything about that match review? <laughs> no, that, that pretty much covers it. Fantastic. Moving on. Main event time. Tommy dreamer broke his finger. That rhymed. and I'm fine with it. So okay, I, uh, I, I could not tell if that was legit or not. I, 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 me neither. Me neither. And I'm fine with that. He DM'd me. <laughs> Apparently Tommy Dreamer DMs people. Did you know that? He, uh, he DM'd you after this? <laughs> yes. He posted a photo <laughs> of a demented hand, like just busted up onto his social media. And I was like, I don't know if this is supposed to be real or fake or whatnot, but um, it's, it's ridiculous and I love it and it's gross. And then he DM'd me. <laughs> uh, what did he say? He said, uh, uh, that picture isn't my hand, nor did I say it is. <laughs> Many people were saying <laughs> my injury was fake because the doctor was, the, the, was fake because the doctor was, I broke 18 fingers, which sucks because we have 10 and I don't know which one I broke more than once. 
LOL. So. Oh, <laughs> I like to think that he just remembers you for your one tweet of oh, shit. How did that go? <laughs> His uh, like it was something like Dreamer looks as good as he ever did. I don't know if that's a compliment to him now or an insult to him in his prime. <laughs> no, I said Dreamer wasn't all that. Uh, you know, Dreamer hasn't really lost a step, but to be fair, he was never that athletic or something to that effect. And Dreamer yes. t- DM'd me saying, "Maybe the best first compliment ever." Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I, I have now received two DMs from Tommy Dreamer. So yes, he is my new best friend. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, he is my new best friend, and we're enjoying life together as buddies. Um, I actually like this match. Um, so I don't know if you know this. Great Muda, uh, technically mm. KG Muto, won the right. GHC which is the Pro Wrestling Noah heavyweight title. He won the GHC heavyweight title um, four days before No Surrender. Mm. 58 years old. Ooh. Yeah. Won the belt. Trifecta held the uh, Triple Crown in all Japan, the uh, NWJP, IWG, the New Japan Pro Wrestling IWGP heavyweight championship. So he's now held the three most major titles in Japan. I think only one or two other people have done that. Um, and I was really thinking that Dreamer would, would win the belt here, but much like with Muto, I was surprisingly impressed with how good his match with Swan was. Mm-hmm. So, you know, tip of the cap to both Muto and Dreamer, who are uh, going strong since the uh, – Muto is since the 80s, Tommy Dreamer since the early 90s. So, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, the, the, the Swan-Dreamer match I liked, there were de- – which is interesting because throughout the whole match, you could just like, and maybe it's just because he was going up, uh, he was opposite Swan, but you could tell how immobile Dreamer is. Mm-hmm. It's it's real bad, <laughs> but at the same time, like they they made it work. It wasn't a it wasn't the same situation of. When of the Jazz Jordan Grace match, when they try, or like it, it was obvious that Jazz, like they tried to do too much and Jazz couldn't keep up. <laughs> now it, they they made it work for for both Swan and Dreamer, and I, I I've said many a times that I've never cared about Tommy Dreamer, but I was a little disappointed he didn't win. I was too. Uh, I, you know, obviously they're building up to Moose v Swan, and that's that's mm-hmm. been the case for maybe a month now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I don't know because I don't. I, they're, they're, I think they're going to have a pay per view in April, and I feel like that's where they're going to do it. And then they'll have Moose's first big match as champion at anniversary. At least that's kind of how it looks. Where, where where the tea leaves are pointing us, so to speak. But man, I don't know. Like sometimes you just got to pivot and and. I think Dreamer winning the belt and then losing it to Moose at Slammiversary may have been the the way to go. But you know, mm-hmm. what, what, what do I know? That, that's yeah, that that's what I would have preferred. It would have been just very easy, you know, have Dreamer win. You know, it's a nice nice feel good story. You know, it makes everyone go home happy, and then you know Moose. Moose beats Dreamer rel- relatively easy for a title, and then you have Swan versus Moose with Moose as the champion instead. Yeah. yeah. I just saw something. Tully Blanchard is going to be in a match on March 3rd. That thing. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if his opponent is going to be DDP. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Final grade on, on no Swan. Yeah. Tully. Tully's got to be 60. At the very least, he is 67. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. AEW is really trying to, uh, uh, you know, kill someone in the ring, apparently. Right. That, that That's a thing. Um, let's see. All right. Um. <clears throat> 
So let's talk Impact last night. Okay. It, it was a show that had things on it. Well, firstly, we got the announcement that Finjuice would be appearing on Impact. Thoughts on that? Uh, interesting. I it's it's cool to see that with Impact partnering with AEW and AEW partnering with New Japan, you get the transitive partnering of Impact with New Japan. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool to see. Which is a kind of uh, ironic, considering they were, you know, not that long ago saying that they had no intentions of working with Impact again, but then they changed uh, ownership, not ownership, uh, leadership. Um, uh, Harold Myers or whatever his name is left, and now they have a new uh, head of the company, and apparently he's more open to working with Impact than anyone. So, yeah, man, there, there you go. Um. So then let's go and switch gears. First match on Impact. Well, actually, we got the debut of Behind the Impact with Josh Matthews and I don't remember who else. Um, I thought it was an interesting show. They, they premiered it live on YouTube and Twitch. I don't know if they're going to be doing that from now on. They don't do that with, with um, After the Bell or, be, or Behind the Bell or whatever the fuck the post show is. But um, I liked it. You know, if I had access TV, I would definitely watch it every uh, every uh, Tuesday, but I don't. So I'll only be able to watch it if they show it. Um, you probably didn't see any of it, so we can we can just move on. I did not. Uh, so we opened the show with a great match for, with uh, Josh Alexander and TJP that Alexander lost. Why? Uh, this was easy. I... Th- this was a match of the year can- candidate for Impact. Like this was fantastic. It was so good. And I say that full well, knowing that I hate, 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 hate TJP. Loathe entirely. Super make a loathe. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was, there was fantastic chain mat wrestling this match. And I, it was, it was a flawless match, except for the fact that Josh Alexander lost I was going to say the night after he won the number one contendership because I'm just, it's still ingrained of Sunday night pay per view, Monday night wrestling wow. show. Yeah. Saturday <laughs> but, and Tuesday I mean, now, it, bitch, though. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't understand why, why you would just have Josh Alexander just lose immediately. Well, they're obviously building up to Miguel versus TJP. That seems to be the direction they're going. Um, yes. I don't know what they're going to do with Alexander. He's just, you know, I love Eddie, but Eddie's let himself go. Um, he's not as quick and athletic as mm-hmm. he was three or four years ago. Maybe that's age. Maybe that's wear and tear. Who knows? But Alexander has supplanted him as the best worker in the company. Yes. So. Here's 100%. hoping we get more from Alexander, and here's hoping Eddie gets himself into shape and goes whole ham hawk on uh, Alexander in a year long feud with them fighting a thousand times because I would absolutely love that. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. woohoo! Woohoo! All right, um, let's see. I don't want to skip any segments, so uh, we get Tommy Dreamer talking to people, and then Brian Myers is like, "Hey, let's do the thing again tonight, Hernandez," and he's like, "Okay." That takes us to our next match. It is Willie Mack versus Davari versus Suicide versus Trey Miguel. They're really putting over Suicide, apparently. He's got a new shirt <laughs> at Impact uh, shopimpact.com. I can't log into my yeah. Impact Plus account, but hey, Suicide gets a new shirt. He gets a new shirt. Can't log Doesn't in. Doesn't win a match, but he gets a shirt. Can't log in, but you know, what, what are you going to do? Trey Miguel gets the win. They're they're really putting some time and effort into Miguel. I really hope he has signed an actual contract and isn't doing a per date thing because, you know, that would suck that they're putting all this time and effort into Miguel and he could just leave. <laughs> but if he did, then look look how smart Sammy Callahan is right now. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? You know, it's like that's hilarious. Thing. That's that's a thing. I, I bet you they'll do another Alexander TJP match at, at the next uh, event in March, 
And that might be when they do Callahan and Miguel. I could see Miguel mm-hmm. going into Slammiversary challenging for the title. X Division title. So, yeah. Who like who knows? Maybe maybe they're not done with Alexander and TJP long term. I don't know. I don't know. Ace Austin's like, I want a title shot. And he's like, well, how about you do a lot of wrestling in the next two weeks and then maybe you get a title shot? And I'm sitting here like, okay. So the the actual idea is um six wrestlers in the exhibition will compete in a tag team, a six man tag team match. The winning team will then challenge one another in a triple threat match with the winner going to get an exhibition championship match. Um, here's the thing. Ace Austin has a point. <laughs> he won the fucking X Cup. He did. <laughs> he, he, doesn't, he shouldn't have to keep doing all this to get a title shot. That being yeah. said, I don't dislike what we're doing with the X Division at the moment because DeMore like, uh, even said in an interview recently that he wants to take the X Division back to its original kind of format where it was a lot based on wrestling, and there was a lot of multi-man matches, a lot of one, like long one-on-one matches, a lot of uh, multi-tag team matches, which was the the whole shtick of the X Division, and they'd gotten away from it. And honestly, you know, I, I mentioned that the Super X Cup was fantastic when it happened. Well, apparently, mm-hmm. the edict for booking the X Division changed dramatically heading into and at the X Cup, and that's why since the X Cup, we're getting these matches again, and I think that was a brilliant move because. Yeah, they've been some of the best matches on the card. So you're not wrong. And with Moose probably getting the title, I think they're like, you know, we want to make sure we still have these matches. So, you know, it, it makes sense. So we get mm-hmm. Hernandez v. Matt Cardona. Um, they're building up to a Brian Myers Matt Cardona feud, and I don't know why, but I kind of want it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I, d- I don't know why. I don't like either man. But I'm sitting here going, all right. This is literally the only thing you have going that I remotely have any interest in. Let's see if you fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm holding out for a hero. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what else? What else could they have these two do? At the moment, other than tag, who cares mm-hmm. <laughs> about that? So I mean, yeah, it it makes it makes all the sense of the world. It's not like I mean, Impact has has one show currently. There, and it's not like the you could say, oh, Matt Cardona and Brian Myers just have just avoided each other for a year and a half or however long. It's like, mm-hmm. Makes sense. So then uh, we got a great moment in the match where <clears throat> Cardona did a flip over the top ropes and perfectly landed on Hernandez. Though I don't think Hernandez will agree that it was perfect because it looks like it kind of hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so we then go uh, after the match. Uh, her Eddie runs out and saves the day and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Then we get a... Uh, a News break moment from AEW's Tony Khan and uh, uh, and Tony Schiavone. I just realized they're both named Tony. Um, so I didn't like these at first, not because they weren't good or funny, but because I felt they were taking some pretty um, accurate shots at a previous. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, Zach? The um, uh, 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 not the aesthetics, but the. Uh, the narrative around Impact was that they didn't yeah. have any money. <clears throat> and Tony Khan's like, hey, you're broke. Your network doesn't have any uh, people watching it. La, 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 la. And, like, listen, like those are, those are stigmas that Impact has dealt with for the last few years, and I don't think it helps them look good. Mm-hmm. That being said, Tony Khan's delivery, delivery is fantastic. He's such a shit-eating heel. It's mm-hmm. it's they're they're growing on me, but the daggered shots at the things that we know to be true don't need to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So here's yeah, ho- here's hoping that changes. It's it's kind of, it's pretty clear that no one told Tony Khan the the rule of if you're cutting a promo on some on someone, you don't bury them. Exactly. But it it does it it does kind of it does kind of work because 
you're right. It does. He really just kind of comes off as the shit eating, shit eating heel that has that has money and power and influence. So it 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 it, it does work to it. It does work to a degree. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> uh, we then get something with um, N- Navia Neva- 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 and Havoc, where they're like, ah, oh, we should just break up. And I'm like, yes. And then Tennille's like, no, don't. Tag with me. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and then they fight. So, that was a... I love the, I love, I love the segment ends with Nevea telling to Neil, "We're gonna go have a match right now," and then up oh, it's the tag team match. Oh. Never mind. So Finn Juice debuts. Uh, I tweeted out three of my favorite wrestlers because they're taking on Reno's come, and then David. Mm-hmm. Hey, what are you going to do? Juice Robinson's amazing. Adam Thorne still is amazing. Luster the Legend's amazing. Irino Scrum needs, needs, needs a real push in the tag team division. Yeah. Let's just be honest about that. Um, so that takes us to the match. It was, it was good. Reno Scrum knows how to work. Finn Juice knows how to work. Juice Robinson's really good on the mic. Uh, we didn't get a lot of that here, which is, uh, I think, uh, an issue that we need to resolve. And uh, all in all, I think it was uh, a, a good outing for, 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 for their first appearance in Impact. Mm-hmm. You're, not, you're not a big New Japan guy, so this is your first time seeing Finn Juice that I'm aware of. How, how, what, what, what do you think? Uh, this is the fir- my first time seeing the tag team. I have seen Juice Robinson a couple times, though I'm trying to remember in what, like, in what aspect I've seen him, because I've definitely seen him in New Japan. He feuded with remember Cody, I think, at one point. He feuded with Lance Archer. Uh, he feuded mm-hmm. with Jay White. He's won some belts. Okay. I think it was. I think it may have been with. Uh, may have been part of the Jay White feud. I'm not sure. He feuded with John Moxley. Hmm. So. Did not, have not did not see John Moxley in, in New Japan, so it's definitely not that. Ah, well, it's probably the uh, Jay White stuff, which was really good because that promo was great. Mm-hmm. So then we get uh, backstage stuff with Roke Heat and and Shira and James Storm and and uh, Chris Saban. James Storm drops a Chris Harris and uh, Chase Stevens line, or maybe it was an Andy Douglas line. I don't remember which one. I thought that was great, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> That's about it. Apparently, Falaba has a gambling addiction and then got kicked out of the, uh, the, the the swingers parade or whatever the fuck we're calling it. So that that was a thing as well. Um, Tanil defeated Navia. I couldn't care less. <laughs> <clears throat> then we get a balance by design. Yes. Navia is just so awkward in the ring. They're not she good. She just doesn't... She she just does not feel she she doesn't look like she knows what she's doing in there. It's real bad. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not great. So <clears throat> we get a violent di- by design promo. Uh, we're getting a tables match next week. It's going to be Jake something versus Cody Deaner, and they're going to break all the yeah. all the tables. So you know things stuff. Then we get uh, Sue Young challenging uh, uh, Kimberly, or, or no, she's with Kimberly challenging, uh, who is it, Jordan Grace and Jazz for a tag match next week? Uh, I think. And the winners get, mm. yeah, yeah, it's Susan and Kimberly yeah. must face Jazz and Jordan Grace next week, and the winners earn a title shot for the tag team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we get the main events. It's Time Dreamer versus Moose in an old school rules match. Um, obviously Moose wins because you, Moose. Well, you know, obviously. So, uh, he slams dreamers face into the, uh, the, the corner turnbuckle with the big old chair. That was a cool spot. That's why it's the image we picked for the match. Overall, I thought it was fine. I think dreamer had two good back-to-back matches. Uh, yeah, he, 
He had probably the his two best matches in the past few years. Yeah. They did say he lost 20 pounds, and if that's true, it shows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because it turns out being fat and overweight is not conducive for a athletic career, especially when you're hitting 50. <laughs> I know. I'm breaking some real news with that one. Uh, Zach, any final thoughts with this week's show? No, I. Uh, there were there was there was some questionable stuff, mostly with Josh Alexander losing. Um, fit, uh, it's nice to see some new Japan influx, and the, that the Finn Juice Good Brothers should be fun to watch, and huh? hopefully Nevea just goes away or they find something better to do with her. <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that'll do it. I got to get running to go watch the uh, resin alien. Uh, this has been uh, making an impact right here at twitch.tv backslash wrestling underground or at the website at real Zach, your personals, you can find uh, him over on DeviantArt or Instagram at Radiance2020, R-A-D-I-A-N-C-E-2020. Right? That's the one. Okay. Or you can find me on Twitter at Chad Nerdcorp, C-H-E-D-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P, or on the Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. Uh, website's realnerdcorp.com. YouTube is youtube.com backslash wrestling underground or youtube.com by searching nerdcorp or twitch.tv backslash wrestling underground or twitch.tv backslash real nerd corp so go, you know go follow us on all those and then say hi we'll be back next wednesday at nine ish <laughs> as always and uh we'll be around to talk more impact wrestling for zachary tyler pp duncan i'm chad Porter. thanks for tuning in thanks for checking us out thanks for giving us a chance and remember as always watch more wrestling thackeray thackeray banks he's home good night tommy dreamer <laughs>